All right, we are gonna get started here in about 30 seconds because we do wanna be cognizant of your time today. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy days um, to learn about our new feature, activity participation tracking. Make sure that you have your group chat box open because we are going to be using that to communicate with you and allow you to ask questions and we will address them um, either through our webinar or Kim is here um, manning the chat channel. So for those of you that are here, I am Callie Wright um, and I am part of the LifeShare support team here and I will be uh, um, moderating our webinar today and with me I have Hi, this is Kim Hartnett, everyone, and I am a client care specialist, and I will be keeping an eye on that chat box. So if you have any questions today, be sure to put them there. Perfect. Um, and as we go, if you think of other questions, we will have some time at the end that Kim and I will be hanging around after the webinar so that if you have additional questions that don't um, pertain to our webinar today, we will be happy to answer some of those questions for you. So we are going to go ahead and get started. So to start out, we have a poll for you. So you can either pull out your smartphone and text that code CWRITE105 to that number 22333 and then you can put in your choice or you can respond on the web page by opening the poll ev.com see right 105 in a new window so go ahead and answer the question for us do you currently track your activity participation So I will give you some time to go ahead and respond. So once again, you can respond either by opening this website in a new window, or you can use your, your phone to respond. You just text CWRITE105 to join the session and you text it to the number 22333. And then once you've joined, you're gonna either indicate yes or no using A or B. So I'll give you about 20 more seconds to enter in your answers. It looks like we have 50-50. Um, some do currently track activity, activity participation and some do not. Awesome. All right. Wow, it looks like we have a lot that currently do. So as a follow-up question, we are going to find out more about how you currently track your activity participation. So once again, you can use the website to be able to um, put in your responses. This is an open-ended response, so go ahead and type in how you currently track activity participation. If you don't currently track your activity participation, there's no need to respond in there, but we are interested to find out how you currently track your activity participation. I'll give you about one minute to go ahead and submit your responses, so a monthly Excel spreadsheet. Pen and pencil attendance, that seems to be a common one that we've heard here at LifeShare. by hand <laughs> yep well we're hoping that our new activity participation tracking is going to help to alleviate some of the pains that you guys have by doing a lot of these things by hand so thank you so much for those of you who participated in our poll we're going to go ahead and dive into our features of activity tracking
And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into the system and show you how to begin using this because it's a feature that is currently live and available to use. It, it doesn't have any additional costs associated with it. It's already a part of your monthly subscription fees. So we will go through the features, um, talk about how it might be used, actually go in the system and take a look at it, and then we'll open it up for you to be able to ask additional questions about the feature. But as we go, if you have any questions about things that we are talking about, go ahead and pop that in that chat box for us. We do wanna make sure that all your questions get answered today. So as far as features of activity tracking, our new feature within LifeShare is accessible on mobile devices. So with our update to LifeShare 2.0, all of our clients are using this. It is very mobile friendly, meaning that you can access LifeShare 2.0 in the content management system through the browser on your tablet and smartphone. And the way that our interface has been built, it adjusts very nicely to be able to be easily used on a mobile platform. So those of you that are on the go constantly, but you do have a mobile device with you, but can't take your desktop computer, this is a feature that you can still take with you on your sm smartphone or your tablet. You can easily add participants. Um, so once you get your residents imported into our system, which I'll show you exactly how to do that, it's very easy to add participants, especially from those mobile devices. You can also now track engagement levels. Now this is an optional thing. You don't have to track engagement levels, but you can also track whether the participant is actively engaged or passively engaged. So that's important information for you to be able to look for trends for the resident or even trends in your activities. You can also print reports, and we'll talk about the two different types of reports that you can generate. There are resident-based reports, and then there are also activity-based reports. And the final feature of our new activity participation tracking is the ability to share with family members. Not only share those reports that you can generate within the LifeShare system, but also you can share with those that have family manager logins. They can log in, look at the calendar section, and then also see a check mark next to the activities that their loved one has participated in. And we'll take um, a little bit of time to be able to show you what that looks like as well. If you have any questions about the features up until this point, go ahead and pop those in the chat box. Kim is standing by to help answer any of your questions. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what the reports can tell you. So why did we build in a reports feature for the activity participation tracking? They can give you resident trends trends as far as the attendance in activities, but it also can give you trends as far as engagement. You can also see participation trends. So which of your um, activities are the most successful? Which ones do you need to look for alternatives? Or maybe different times of the year that you're seeing drops in attendance? Those kind of participation trends. You can also track dimension of wellness trends. So some of you, if you have um, been adding activities in, may have noticed there is now a layer where you can add on dimensions of wellness to your activities. You are not gonna see those anywhere except for in the reports for activity participation tracking. So it allows you to see which dimensions of wellness you are hitting throughout the month um, with your activities. So that's um, some more trends that you can see as far as that goes. So why did we build this feature? So we have heard a lot of our clients talking about using pencil and paper and manually recording their activity participation. We realize that a lot of your states mandate that you track activity participation. We wanted to build within our system a way to kind of have one place where you're not only recording your activities, creating calendars, but now you have the ability to track participation in a very intentional way. Um, and that is evidence-based. And 
with that evidence to be intentional, you can be intentional now in your care meetings for residents and in your activity planning. So for those of you that have administrators that are not on this webinar, this is a great thing to go to them and talk to them about. Um, it's an included feature. They're not having to pay anything more. And if it's already included in something that you're using, it's a great way to get your foot wet using this evidence to be intentional in your care. So what are the top three reasons that you should start today? It's portable, it's efficient, and it's exportable, meaning that you can open up um, the reports in an Excel file and actually even turn those into graphs. So those are the top three reasons. So let's go ahead and take a look at this feature. So what I have done is logged in just as you are um, as activity directors. I have rights to a campus. So I'm gonna go through how you would go about at, um, tracking your activity participation. So before I get started, I am going to go into um, to my specific campus level, and I'm going to go to the directory. And what you'll notice if I go to the residence area, I do have residents already moved in the system. You don't necessarily have to have the census area completed to begin using activity participation tracking. You simply just need to add your residence here under the residence tab. Now, if you have the residents added for notifications, you're already one step ahead in this game. It's very easy to add your residents. Simply go to the Add button and add a new resident. You can put their first and last name in, and if you choose to put their phone number with area code, then you can also have them available to be notified for activity notifications. So a one thing that you put in to create the resident and you have two benefits that you can reap from our life share system. Now let's go ahead since I already have some residents set up we're going to go into our activities and I'm going to actually navigate to a unit of campus where my activities are housed. So today this, mor or, um, this morning we had silver sneakers and I wanted to track the participation. I took my tablet with me pulled it up through the browser. When you click into the activity, this button that says participation appears. This button will not appear until you save the activity the first time. When you click participation, you now come to a screen where you can add participants. When you click add participants, it comes up with a list of your residents. If you only see the first five, you can click next to see the next. Simply check the boxes of those who attended your activity, click OK. Now you see the list of residents that you have selected as participants in your Silver Sneakers activity. You can choose to add the engagement level, but you don't have to, it's not a required field. If you would like, simply click on the none selected and either choose active or passive. If you accidentally added a resident, what you can do is you simply click and remove the resident. Kelly, we have a good question uh, from Shauna. She's wondering, can the list of residents be narrowed down by neighborhoods so that a smaller list of your residents would come up? So when you're tracking that participation at the door, is it always going to pull up every single resident or would there be a way to make that list smaller? Shana, I don't think that there is a way to narrow the list um, because a lot of times, um, even though like on the, I have this activity posted on assisted living, that doesn't mean that only assisted living residents are going to be attending that activity. So we wanted to give you the ability to add residents 
across the board. However, what you can do when you click add participant, up here there's a search box. So if you see someone walk in the door, what you can do is you can actually search for their name and you can see that person's name. So use that search box. I've already entered her, that's why it doesn't want to show that. But when you click add participant, use the search box to be able to search for the participant that you're looking for rather than having to scroll through everything. Does that make sense for you, Shauna? Once you go ahead and click save, Okay, it will take you back to the activity. You save your activity. I'm only going to modify this event. Okay, when you're in the activity section, there is this reports tab. When you click on the reports, you have the option to create the two different reports that we talked about earlier, the participation by activity and the participation by resident. If I click participation by activity, I am prompted to fill out a date range. So it may be that, you know what, I'm taking an audit of the activities that we did in the last month in December, and I want to know how successful this was um, as far as our programming goes. So I'm going to choose the date ranges that are for December, I can run my report, and it now shows me, okay, these are the activities that I tracked participation for in December. And it looks like, okay, our ones with the most participants were morning meditation and silver sneakers, okay? But it looks like Sunrise Oat Yoga had a lot of active participants. So if we had tracked the dimension of wellness, it would also show here. If you want to export this to a camera separated value, you can go ahead and click this button and it will open it in an Excel spreadsheet for you. If you wanna drill in further to any specific activity, so I wanna look at, okay, you know what? Sunrise Yoga this week only had one participant. Okay, Sunrise Yoga had two. I want to see what participants were in this Sunrise Yoga that were not in this one. So you can click into a specific activity and see who the participants were. So Ida Mitchell and Miles Vance were in that one. Okay, Ida Mitchell was here. So Miles Vance did not attend this. I wonder what was going on December 9th that caused miles not to attend. So that is the first report that you can kind of do with the activity participation. All I did was simply click on this activities tab to take me back to the main activities screen. I can click on reports, participation by resident. Now I choose a resident like Ida Mitchell. And you know what, we have a care meeting coming up. And our last care meeting was actually November 15th, so I'm gonna put that in there. And we wanna see what has Ida been doing towards her goals of engagement um, since our last care meeting. So I'm going to run this report, and now I can see all the activities I have tracked Ida as attending, and I can actually see her engagement level. So if I started to see some trends, like all of a sudden from this point on, the, December 10th on, I had all passives, that would tell me something about her engagement and that something might be going on with her to be able to identify some of those trends. Just like with the other report, you can export this into an Excel file and you can actually turn this into a graph to be able to share with family members and with other staff members as well to inform your care. So I've kind of given you a glimpse into what the activity participation tracking looks like. I'm going to go ahead and run through the same step-by-step um, -step for another activity just so you guys can see it again. As I'm going, if you have any questions about adding activity participation, adding residents, or even creating reports, please go ahead and put that in the chat box. So, Let's say I take my smartphone with me to Cooking with Clara this afternoon. So I click into that specific activity. I click participation up in the right hand corner. Okay, I can have this screen open ready to go as my participants start to walk in. 
and I can simply say, okay, you know what? Honey has showed up. There we go. I'm going to add her in. Okay. All right. Now Ida has shown up. Okay. Here's Ida. Going to add her. Oh, you know what? Miles just came in the door. I'm going to add Miles. Okay. Now I can go ahead and I can elect their engagement level, leave the list screen up while we go through the participation and the actual activity. Or what I can do is I can save the screen with none of the engagement levels um, indicated and I can go about my day and when I come back to my computer later, click into the activity and click into participation, I can actually add those engagement levels later. So I can see what they do during the whole activity because they may start out engaged and then may move to a more passive engagement by the end. So I do wanna make sure that that's indicated by their final engagement level, okay? Remember to generate the reports, simply click on your activities tab again, click reports, and then you choose either participation by activity or participation by resident, depending on your intention for using that report, okay? Now we did mention that there are a couple ways to share this information with family members. So the first way was to print out the reports, generate graphs to share at the care meetings, but the other way that we mentioned earlier was to use the family manager login. So there is a way to create a family manager login for your residents, and we can help you with that process. Um, but I have set myself up as a family manager for Ida Mitchell. When I go into the calendar, it shows the appointments that I've created for her, but then it also shows the activities. And next to the activities that she's participated in today, there are these gray check marks. And this is an indication to me that she has participated in this activity. It will not tell her whether she was active or passive. It will just simply say she was at that activity and she attended the activity. They can look days, other days, um, let's see, if I go back to December and click December 10th, I want to know what did she participate in that day. Oh, you know what? Cooking with Clara seems to be one of her favorites. I want to make sure whenever Cooking with Clara comes up that I encourage her to attend that. But I also might be taking a look at some of the other activities offered and seeing what other activities that my loved one could be engaged in. So you know what, she likes cooking with Clara, but she could really benefit from some evening meditation. So I can see if my encouragement for her to attend a specific activity um, is reflected through the activity participation. So that's another way that they can see it and you can share it with them. So just wanted to point that out. Please let me know if you have any questions about activity tracking up to this point. We do want to make sure that your questions get answered. Um, in our time together today, but we do realize that you may think of questions about this feature later on. So Kim has typed our support email address and phone number so that if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out um, to us about this feature. We are also going to ask you for some help. We do these monthly webinars and we would like some ideas for topics for 2020 about things that you would like featured during our monthly webinars. Last year, we did 12 webinars for one each month, and they varied in topic. We did some panel discussions. Um, we have done things where we go over certain features that we have. Um, sometimes we ask for a guest expert to come on. Um, so that's a great question, Shauna. Can you hide activity so it's in the system, but it does not show on the Life Share screen? So Shauna, in the LifeShare system, there's a way to hide activities from the calendar, but there is not a way to hide it from the LifeShare screen or the mobile app. So to hide it from a calendar, you simply, when you are creating the event, there is a toggle 
down here and it says exclude from printed calendars. So if you toggle that, it will hide it from showing on the printed calendar, but it will still show on the screens. Great question. We do love your suggestions, Shoshana. If you put a little blurb as to um, maybe your case as to why you might want that hidden from your um, screens, then we can give those notes to our developers as they continue to look at additional features um, for our system. So thank you. Anybody have any questions or any ideas for our monthly webinars, please go ahead and put those in the chat box. And we are just about at 1230 um, and we do wanna be cognizant of your time. So we thank you so much for your time today. Kim and I will be around for a while to um, answer any questions that you may have. Um, it can be about activity participation tracking or it can be other questions that you have about the life share system. I do want to make you aware that Tuesday, February 11th at 2 p.m. We will be hosting our next free life share webinar and this one's going to be a, a marketing panel where we talk about marketing to your prospective residents and families and just some kind of tips that we have from life share and from our um, our parent company Spectrio. So we'll have some guest panelists on there to talk about some marketing suggestions that we have for you all. So we hope that you will join us. It's never too early to RSVP. So if that's something you're interested in, please send us an email to that support at lifesharetech.com. It's indicated right down here. And we would be happy to send you a link to join. And don't worry, I know it's a month away, but we do send reminders that you did register for that event and we'll remind you when the webinar gets closer. So thank you again. And because you have joined us for this webinar, you will also get an email reminding you when it does get closer to time that we are offering this marketing panel webinar as well. So. Thank you again, and please use the chat box if you have any additional questions. Kim and I will hang around for the next five or so minutes. Um, we appreciate you, and we appreciate your time, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your week.